pet. Your pet can't tell when he or she doesn't feel well, so you need to be aware of the signs and symptoms of poor health. Patty joins us now with Dr. Joel Kahn and has more on what to look out for. Kira, you're, un, uh, you're right, unlike kids who tell us when they're not feeling very well, in one way or another, pets not so easy to read. And uh, our Dr. Joel Kahn joining us this morning to talk about some of those things that may go unnoticed on pets, which are lumps and bumps, usually not a problem, but can be, right? That's right. Just like in, in people, and your doctor will mm -hmm. tell you this, you want to you keep an eye on your pet and uh, be carefully looking for any new things that are arising. They can't say, oh, I have a little bump here that I didn't have before. Right, and especially, you know, a really furry animal. Mm -hmm. It can be sometimes tough to see those things. Right, so how, how as a pet owner, what do we do? We, we pet, obviously, well, you should be petting your pets, but that isn't always the, the, you don't get all of the places you need to be checking, so what do we do? Well, one of the things to do is uh, every so often make sure that you're actually feeling your pet's entire mm -hmm. body from stem to stern, all oh. the way down the legs, all over. In females, paying special attention to the mammary area. In okay. males, if they're intact, the testicular area, looking for anything abnormal. Okay. So then when you find something, I tend to be the person who, if there's a lump or bump, oh, it's got to be a tumor, you know. I tend to be a worry wart yeah. until, you know, told differently by the, by the veterinarian. But how do you know this is a time to call the vet, this is a time for a visit, or well, this is probably not anything important? Well, I think it's always, you know, safe to talk to your veterinarian, mm -hmm. and they can do some simple tests to figure out if it is benign or malignant. Uh, in general, dogs tend to have more benign growth, especially as they get older. Okay. Some of them are kind of lump factories. Um, cats, uh, growths on cats tend to be a little bit more serious. Okay. So things that you can feel for on the animal is, is the lump easily movable from the skin versus okay. fixed? Mm -hmm. um, can you kind of get your hands all the way around it? Is it painful? Uh, like pain. they react if you touch exactly. it and they, don't, and they don't want you to be touching it. Your okay. typical benign growth should be pain free. Um, is it changing rapidly or getting okay. bigger or changing in character rapidly? Um, that can be a sign of malignancy. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the other thing is, is you know, is it haired? If it's losing hair, right? Or it's a little bald spot, and you can actually mm -hmm. see the place. Okay. Is it changing color? This is an example here of a lipoma, which is a fatty tumor, very common in dogs. You can see this is actually shaved, so maybe a right. poor example, but it's fully haired. It's non-painful. If you were to touch that, you'd find it's freely movable. Okay. Um, very common lump and bump, and usually something we don't. You, you know, want to get this about. checked though. This exactly. is not something, if you see this as a pet owner, you say, well, you know, Dr. Khan said that's probably not something to worry about. First check it, then stop worrying once you have heard that it's okay. That's right. So here's another example of something that doesn't look that different. This mm -hmm. is actually a highly malignant tumor called a mast cell tumor, but you can see it's red. Mm -hmm. These will sometimes become ulcerated or bleed, and that's also a sign uh, it could be something to be concerned about. So much more serious. Definitely have that looked at as soon yes. as you see something like that. Yeah, so something you can do is actually make a small body chart of your animal and, and document mm -hmm. these. This is a warty growth called a sebaceous adenoma, very, very common, especially in dogs like Cocker Spaniels, and also benign, but you can see very similar it, looking. It looks a little scary. It does look a little scary. Okay. So again, something to check out, and your vet can easily give you the, the uh, green light or red light on so this. I recently had our smallest, well, all the dogs got shots, but the smallest chihuahua, who is just a little more than uh, two pounds, didn't react very well to her vaccinations, and she got a little lump on the back of her neck. And at first, I didn't realize it was, I didn't know where the shots went in, so I didn't immediately relate it. So I was concerned, mm -hmm. but then it turned out related to the vaccine she had. Is that common? It's fairly common in dogs for them to develop a little local mm -hmm. inflammatory reaction, but okay. always get them checked out. And my, uh, our policy at our hospital is if there's anything vaccine, possibly vaccine associated, we will always check it out and usually not even charge for that after the, the exam. Um, in cats, vaccine-associated lumps are much, much more serious. So if okay. you see anything in a previous vaccine site, and we always vaccinate in the same areas, okay. uh, be sure to get it checked out. So that is a warning sign for your cat. Maybe are they reacting to the vaccine itself? or? Well, it's not fully understood. About okay. 1 in 10,000 cats can actually uh, develop a tumor at a vaccine site, oh, and these okay. tumors can be highly malignant. So just the, the thing is, Pet your pet, see if they're lumpy and bumpy, and if they are, call your vet right away. Check it out. It just, it doesn't... Probably a good rule of thumb. Better safe than sorry, right? Right. <laughs> you just don't want to find out later. And, you know, with the older dogs, I have seen, I'm sure you've seen plenty, dogs that have a growth, um, 
that really is unsightly and you think, oh my gosh, that's terrible. And the pet owner says, oh no, you know, they're fine. And it's just a part of old age. But mm -hmm. some of those can look really kind of terrifying. Yeah, they can. And, and you know, some of these dogs They're not develop, worth removing. It depends what it is. If it's a fatty tumor, I mean, mm -hmm. I've, I've removed fatty tumors that are close to five pounds and they're benign. Um, they're probably not very comfortable to carry around. Right. But they're not causing that dog any problems other than being unsightly, which the dog probably doesn't care too the, much about. Right, most most <laughs> dogs don't care. <laughs> Although, you know, those show dogs get a little bit uh, prissy. <laughs> they can, yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right, Dr. Joel Kahn, thank you so much. And if you are interested in more information, you can uh, check out kcly.com under story links there. We have more information posted for you. And we look forward to your next topic. You can always email if you have um, questions or comments for Dr. Joel Kahn here. You can send those in as well. I don't know if we have a graphic for that, but uh, you are willing to answer those questions, whether here on your next visit or if you're able to maybe just send off an email. Absolutely. Either way. All right. We are right back in just a moment.